Welcome everybody. Six of the Risen Esports, Risen Dominate Pre-Made. I am the doctor being joined by I'm Not Co. And we are going to be casting some fantastic League of Legends for you today. How are you doing today? Doing pretty well. Late, nice, late night last night, but excited for this matchup. Uh, interesting names to start things off. Um, to be honest, I don't even want to say half of them because... It makes me feel strange, but <laughs> hopefully they're good League of Legends players and, and we can ignore the rest of it. Yeah, so we are seeing Twelch. That's so hard to say. Level Intellects versus Weeb Edition. Um, we are seeing bans coming out already. Sejuani, definitely super strong right now and worthy of a ban. Very good. Uh, Trundle has been seen uh, with his new buffs and uh, has always been a counter pick. Uh, but just super strong, like you said. So don't want to have to play that champion because it might not fit the competition they want to go for. Um, but a lot of jungle focus, the Rek'Sai, and also that Terex Stone combination um, being taken away by Weeb, by, or by the Weebs. Um, we'll see if they go for Tan Pantheon Talia as well. That's an option in the bot lane. Another strong duo there. So potential for them to, to banner pick that either side, of course. But um, a couple cheesy bot lanes can sometimes get you to you know early advantages like that and uh, snowball your way uh, to victory. Kind of surprise your opponents with that, and it's such a deadly combo. 
uh, pretty much impossible to play into for any normal AD carry. Yeah, and I mean, when strats like that reach the highest level of play, then it's really kind of worrying as you know someone who actually plays the game, because then it's only so much longer before it comes to your solo queue games. And I remember I played like a single League of Legends game last week, and it had Sonoteric in it, and I'm just like, really? Anytime. But now. But we ended up winning that game, because it was on my side. So it worked out well for us. But we do so, see the first pick. So the Hecarim comes through here. One of the strong junglers left here. Jarvan has been the sort of the next one in priority. It seems those are the top four junglers right now. You got the Sejuani, Rek'Sai, Hecarim, and the Jarvan. So we'll see if, if we pick, uh, if we addition picks that up uh, in response here. But yeah, Sonoteric is one of those bot lanes that's not very lane dominant. They're all about the scaling. That's sort of their... Um, you know, that's kind of their strength. Whereas Panther and Talia are much more lane dominant, and that's sort of their idea is that they're going to threaten kills on you, and that's how they're strong. So these two kind of cheesy bot lanes that are actually meta right now do extremely different things. But it looks like we're going to get the Skarner, not the Jarvan this time. So two, you know, guys that just want to go fast run at you and, and engage here in the Hecarim and the Skarner. Yeah, and Skarner, so good. Um, they did change him up recently. Well, both of these jungles actually received some buffs recently, which is why we're seeing so much more of them. Um, and it's, while they, yes, they want to run at you and just, like, take you out, it's doing it different ways. Hecarim is just going to delete your AD carry, like, by himself. But whereas Skarner has to be more team-focused, has to, you know, get that impale and bring him back to the team, or wait for Thresh to get the hook in and take advantage of that, you know, hook in into Impale. But as we've known for many, many moons, because connor has been out quite a while, Morgana is one of the hardest counters to what this champion wants to do. Yeah, the spell shield is super useful here, and uh, in, in many ways, right, it's, it's, it's such a good disengage tool and, and prevention of an engage. Uh, you know, like you see, it looks like you're going to have a Draven Thresh in the bot lane here. Well, the Morgana, if she's, her spell shield's on point, she can definitely deny that, uh, you know, potential engage from the Thresh's death sentence, um, you know, landing is crucial for that bot lane to get their all-in they need. But with Morgana, that's, you know, obviously makes that really hard to do. So, you know, there is a, a possibility in a teamfight where, you know, hey, the Morgana, she's only got one spell shield, right? Maybe she can, you can only save one person. That's where they can try and win those skirmishes, but... In lane, the Morgana is going to completely shut down the Thresh, and later on in the game, the Morgana will make Skarner's life very difficult. Still, though, like I said, one one spell shield, so QSS is still going to have to be picked up at some point, and that's a big, you know, gold sort of sink you have to get, you know, in the mid game where you want to get those item spikes. Yeah, and there's a nice little, um, uh, I don't know how phrase this. There's a nice little sticking point, you know, like you said, Morgana only has the one spell shield, but what this Camille pick does, I think, very interestingly, is say Skunner goes a little deep into the back line trying to snag somebody out. You know, if the black shield is not available and they do get impaled, Camille still has the Hextech ultimatum to then lock him down. So he can't really run as far away as he may want either. And so that may end up coming to bite him because he may just like be like, all right, no black shield, it's down on cooldown, I'm going to go in. And then he gets ultimatum and dies that way. Um, so we do see the second set of bands coming through completely focused in the mid lane, sort of, you know, Akali and Vladimir both can be played both mid and top. Um, but just such heavy focus. We did get word from production that the cat arena was a uh, fluff pick. Um, it was supposed to be something else. We're still waiting on what the pick actually was. Um, but so it's not actually going to be a cat arena mid lane. It's going to be a, a, a uh, looks, I believe it's going to be a Syndra for them. I think it's just a stand in. Um, but yeah, that would be an interesting pickup for them here. Two mages in the mid lane, it looks to be here. And then the Caitlyn Morgana for lane dominance in the bot lane. This seems about as textbook a counter to, to Draven as you can get, quite honestly. The Caitlyn, with her superior range, can make his life difficult, harass him in lane. And then they just prevent the all in with the Morgana. You know, Caitlyn Morgana is a great duo together, but. Uh, they can shut down a Draven Thresh, you know, just superbly. So as long as the spell shield's there, as long as they are doing a good job keeping the Draven at bay, I think this is a really good setup here for tw for uh, the Twitch level intellects. 
a weeb addition. I worry that their bot lane is going to be, you know, in, in a terrible position. And with the Hecarim already given over here, I mean, those are that's just a really strong uh, jungler to deal with. The Skarner are a good pick, but definitely will not be able to help in the early game in the bot lane until, at the very least, he gets Predator Boots. And even then, you want to look for that level 6 marks. So I'm not sure he's going to be able to provide the help they need to, to salvage that lane. And I'm a little worried, not just for the bottom lane, but for the mid lane as well. Hecarim is a champion that works so effectively, just simply deleting immobile carries. And so you have Syndra, who's fairly squishy. Yes, she's going to build a Zonia's relatively quickly, but it's still, you know, a forced item, just like that QSS would be in favor of Skarner. So it is something that, you know, she has to sink a lot of gold into before she can really take advantage of it. And until that point, Hecarim's going to have so much pressure being able to just jump in, blow her up, and move on to the next one. Um, same thing with Draven, so immobile. He does have his stand aside, but it's not something that you can really rely on. You need a little bit more. Um, so we're going to have to see how these picks scale into the late game. Scaling always uh, important, right? Both teams have it. It's just a matter of you know, when these item sparks are being hit. Um, and, and you know how, especially when you have a tier user in the Cassiopeia, I, I assume she'll be going for the tier. Could could be a tierless build, but that's I, I, what I would assume she'd go for. You know, if you can stack that up early on, that can definitely mean that you hit a power spike earlier than you normally. And uh, for Draven, I think he's kind of an interesting champion because he has a lot of flexibility uh, in his build. You're gonna build AD, you know, that's what's gonna happen, right? But you know, what what AD do you build? Do you build blood first or thirst? first you know for that sustain and lane dominance as well as the ability just to you know be able to take on multiple members of the enemy team if you're, if you're ahead right or do you go for you know uh the crit very early on and try and, and get that way because the bloodthirst are great as a first item but when you hit two three items you're behind in that sort of crit curve and then the caitlin if she gets her second zeal item before you do she, she's gonna be doing a lot more damage so i think that uh, the scaling going to be important, and, and sort of the item choices as well here. And what time do you opt for the QSS? Do you rely on the Morgana for a really long time, or do you, you pick it up earlier uh, to make sure that the Skarner can't do anything? And that's also relying on how much gold do you have, because if you are behind, you need the damage, right? You can't afford that QSS, and that's sort of the pitfall a lot of teams make from behind. You know, they're kind of forced into it. You can't really blame them, because they got to kill the enemy team if they want to win a fight. But the Skarner just kind of uses that uh, R, and it you know, lights out from there. Yeah, reducing your opponent's health to zero is usually the ideal goal, but as we head on to the Rift guys on the blue side for Twelch level intellects, we have a Wild Terry, Minion, Margarine, Itchy Rat, and Hernandez. They have a lot of interesting names here. Both teams, I love their team names. Uh, Itchy Rat like i don't know where that came from but i feel like that has got to be an incredible game just the simplicity of it but i like it and i like their team comp as well uh, got the ignite hecarim coming in as well no ghosts so you won't be going quite as fast but potential for even better early games early ganks yeah i actually just noticed the ignite now that you've said it i had not noticed it earlier um don't necessarily that his early ganks are going to be that much more potent but come you know mid to late game when ignite becomes relatively useless it's it's going to be so much more detrimental than having a flash or a ghost to like assassinate somebody because i'm pretty sure doesn't he get more damage out of ghost mid to late game than he would ignite uh depends on who you're igniting um and sort of what, how, how long you're using the ghost as well in combat, right? Because if you pop the ghost and then start autoing someone right away, then you sort of have more AD to use over time. So it kind of, it's kind of depends on the situation as well as, like I said, who you're igniting. Because if you have someone you, you got, you need grievous wounds for, right? Like a Mundo, or in this case, you know, Aatrox might probably have a lot of healing because he's been up to the Death Dance a lot recently. Same thing with the Draven if he's got life deal. So, it sort of depends on the value of the target you're igniting, but in general, yes, you could say late game the ghost can be better for damage, but early game uh, definitely ignite can prove more useful. I can definitely see a world where that happens. Now, taking a look at this top lane, not a matchup where you've seen traditionally, you know, Neutrox versus Camille. You know, tell me a little bit about how this lane is or how this lane should go. Well, yeah, interesting. Two bruisers here. Um, I think with 
hold on, we got a bit of a trade in the mid lane. Just a little uh, love taps back and forth, but, but it, it's an interesting matchup to be sure. I think it's it's definitely a skill matchup. It's not one-sided like the Fiora Aatrox matchup where it's just like, all right, Fiora parries everything and I can't do anything because she dashes around, right? Camille has a lot of mobility, but it's not a ridiculous amount where she can just dodge everything. So I think it's very much a skill matchup here. Um, could also see some early itemization. I, I might pick up early Ninja Tabbies, but Camille's also reliant on, on the team app for Wave Clear. So I think the itemization could be interesting here. But yeah, a skill matchup, I think, overall. And um, level six, the, the Hex Skull main could keep you from running away for quite a long time. And that way, you know, when you revive, maybe you aren't actually able to fully make it out. So we'll, we'll see how the interactions come through. But both these players want to take each other on, I think. This Definitely going to be a lot of back and forth there. And all of these lanes are doing very aggressive trading. We've seen in the mid lane a couple times now. Gank into the top lane. Going to get that charge, but Kit's in the wrong way. Not too much to worry there if you're Hubris. A very nice dash away. Uh, a slip into the brush there. Lost vision, and the words came in. You could see two words sitting in that brush, but they couldn't quite get the angle on him there, and he's able to wait. Done the there, gets the ignite and the cleanse. One more auto's all it takes, and that is going to be first blood going over to Moi. And now they do get the flash out of Hubris. Going to get the knock up. No drag back, though. A good dodge of the gank again. He's sitting at 10 to 21 CS now. The Hackram King came in top lane has been, uh, put a lot of pressure. The Skarner, he's slightly up in camps here, but he hasn't really had the same map pressure here. Has not gone back for early Predator boots, so he really hasn't been able to have any successful ganks even if he wanted to. So uh, the Hackram getting to work as we all knew he would early on. He still has his Ignite too. He's now onto that blue smite though, so he kind of is looking for more opportunities. Now, Blue Smite is not typically what we will see a Hecarim build first because he's usually going Predator. This game though, he has the Conqueror and it, it's another great late game tool, right? Because he's gonna get so much healing and everything out of it. But do you think it's kind of a mismatch with the Ignite Summoner, which is much more early game focused? A little bit. I mean, I, I think I think that just the raw damage from both of those things is just good. Uh, so I just I think it, it being just picking up the blue smite here as well as the fact that you can are you are playing it's a Skarner, the slows are just useful. I think that it's just generally a useful smite and both are good. I think it just you have pros and cons here. So I think the blue smite good for uh, because you don't have the ghost allows you to sort of speed up the people. Uh, you know, that's kind of the, the, you don't need a ton, you know, like, you, you don't need a ton, you don't need the ghost necessarily, but the boost might helps to get those ganks off. Okay, and we'll have to see, you know, where his next move is, if he decides to keep ganking that top side, and especially now that the flash is down, or if he tries to make a play on maybe the mid lane, because it's so immobile, and, you know, is already kind of in a bad spot for Cassiopeia. Yep, the solo kill early on really helping out with the Syndra. And uh, as a result, she gets priority, going to help out on the Dragon here. So a nice pickup for them early. Build pretty even, but uh, that Infernal Drake, it might not matter a ton now. But in a couple minutes, that thing's going to start adding up. And the gold lead, uh, you know, may not be indicate, may not indicate what really is the strength of these teams. Stun not going to connect. Minion going to bring Wom back deeper into the lane, though. Ignite coming out. Conqueror Prox as well. We'll have to see who comes out ahead. Mwam, though, getting snared up. Gonna go down. That is a trade kill. Not too much there to do for Zohair. Very nice gang there. A second one from the heck. From this time, he fixed up the, the first kill. But uh, blowing the flash in the top side was good. Now he's finally got a successful gank in the mid lane. Well, I, I, suit a gang. I don't know really know. The Syndra was pushed up pretty far, but... Got him in the yeah, end it was like they, they knew the dragon went down, so he was trying to counter jungle a little bit. And then Syndra was just really, really aggressive and ended up getting caught out. And that's such a good trap combo. I mean, that's some one of the deadliest ones in the game. I think it was Morgana binding into Caitlyn Trap, into just everything else. He got hit by like three headshots there. Plus the ignite means that he is going to go down in the end, even with the Thresh Shield.
Well, the perfect layering there used heal as well, but because of that ignite, uh, the grievous wounds came through. Didn't get a ton off the, uh, the healing. As in top, top lane, we may have another solo kill. Ult coming out of Hubers, forcing the flash. No flash to follow, but he'll take that all. Every lane getting aggressive, even when the junglers aren't around. Definitely want to fight here. You look at all these matchups, they all want to trade aggressively early and, and look for those solo kills. Right now, two lanes have already done that. And uh, Margarine maybe looking to do it again, but a good disengage. Yeah, and you did go that tier build that you were talking about earlier. Ter playing with fire, I feel. He's pretty low HP hanging out in that top side. However, Minion finds himself a nice little demon lord. You can probably solo him, but it's unfortunate. Fortunate that Terry wanted to be a part of it because he ends up trading his life for no reason. Stun is not going to connect there. That hook does instantly cleanse the way. Gets the phase rush in time to walk away safely. Very nice cleanse there. Almost instantaneous. The good hook forces that one out. Kenny with a nice roam here. Look at the Draven, a little bit of pressure, but uh, it's definitely worth that roam. And uh, they're looking to, I think, extend this play. A lot of good ward spots it out. Margarine might find himself a stun. Wom gonna get it. Dodges out on the petrifying gaze as well. Ultimate available. Another solo kill coming in from Wom. There you go. Another solo kill. I mean, he just was playing around that vision. Good, good words throughout that bot side river and that control word played a key part in that. Very nice play. Another solo kill on the Syndra. Great start for him so far. Here but the hack comes round, he's like Blue Smite into the charge, does get knocked back, blows the ultimate, but after the Thresh Lantern came in, Ignite coming out, there's the Impale, this is a dead horse, off to the glue factory with you, and that is what happens when you bite off more than you can chew, Wild Terry gets a bit of a heal, but already so, Hubris doesn't have the ultimate, so this could go Watch either way. Watch available for him though, so he can dodge a potential hook shot. Gets fished out there by the tormented soil. Yeah, so the the thresh hook is on his shoulder cooldown than, than shield, because I believe. Let me take a quick look at the Morgana and just make sure I'm right on this one. Yeah, he's putting he's putting points in the dark binding, um, which means that the black shield is a. Um, oh well, it's a slightly longer cooldown. So it's about two seconds longer than death sentences right now. So there's a potential opening for Kenny. But Kenny's actually opted to put three points in Flay first, which is sometimes something Threshers will do. But I thought he might put points in Q this time, just because of the fact that he has, you know, a lot of damage with Draven, and he he wants the cooldown reduction so that he has openings when the, the spell shield is down. Um, but yeah, so there's a slight advantage there for Kenny, a potential opening if they're able to evade out the spell shield. Yeah, and I'm really surprised, or I guess I'm not really surprised that this lane is going so in favor of Ichirat. I feel like even without that kill earlier, this lane is relatively the same because of just how effective Caitlyn is at pushing people in and making sure that, you know, you're getting tower plates and getting pressure. And, you know, I've said it before, the ability to headshot towers is just so bonkers. Um, but we're seeing here the Pilt Over Peacemaker Dark Binding combo. You know, Dark Binding lands, even if you're not close enough or the tower is in the way and you can't get a trap off, you just throw out that Pilt Over Peacemaker. And if it's the only thing that you're hitting is that one champion, it hurts so much. The, the Binding into Trap combo has always been deadly. Like, it is so ridiculous because there's, there's no counterplay, right? When the first thing lands, you, it just, all right. I'm going to get hit by all this stuff, and there's nothing I can do. So that's why the, the binding, sometimes you just have to flash out of respect early on. It's so it's such a tough lane to play into. This Kenny will get aggressive, but another disengage here. Uh, Predator picked up the Skarner. May I look to get a gank off here with the ultimate uh, now off limp. Yeah, and we do see the warrior enchant for Hecarim. Just going to be going all damage all the time. Wants to be able to make sure that he can delete these champions when he gets at them. Hookshot in, gets the AD shield. And such a good trade there. Ends up losing it on the back end, though. Oh, no! Hubris didn't know that connected! That would have been for sure a kill had he kept going. Yeah, it, 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 Terry, the only way he could have gotten out of that uh, was to walk to the side there directly and that way he would have been he would have still been closer to Hubris though so i think that was a missed opportunity to continue to go had ultimate available and flash so there's i think the main could have got connect black shield blocks onto the hook sway lead taking so much damage gonna flash out of the solo shack here comes the, the ace in the hole blocked up by kenny 
Yeah. Right. They're gonna Lux. play top side though. Three top here. They're gonna try and fight over this rift. Just losing patience though. Ultimate in gets the smite. Blue Tim gets the heralds. And now here comes Hubris with the. Terry's gonna get the Hextech ultimatum, but not before Hecarim dies. Double kill from Wom. And now it's just while Terry flashes over the wall. Hubris set to follow. Gets one. Gets two. Not enough damage. Gonna survive. And that is two kills over, but they lose the Herald, but nobody is in town. Although, actually, I missed Marjorie picking it up. Yeah, Marjorie was able to sneak in there, grab the Rift Herald, which is key. Makes that play, uh, you know, a bit more worth it. Still, they, they lose. Oh, my God. Uh, well, hold on. <laughs> so much damage. Uh, I mean, it just like... happens out of nowhere. The binding the binding hits, and you get so you get 2v2 killed underneath your tower. They're just so hard to play against here. And the binding's something good. Uh... You know, an itchy rat with a good follow up. So it's been so tough to play into this one. And they kind of counter pick themselves in this matchup, honestly. After they saw the Morgana, I think you back off and don't play aggressive with the Draven pick. Yeah, because I mean, you know, we talked in Champ Select how the Morgana was there to block out the Skarner. You know, Black Shield, Dark Binding, both such effective tools at stopping Skarner from doing his thing. And then you're like, all right, I'm going to pick a Draven, one of the most immobile ED carries in the game against Morgana blank. Like, I don't even know who their AD carry is yet. I'm just going to go Draven. And it's like, now we can see that maybe it wasn't the best shot calling or best, you know, decision making there. Yeah, I, I think if you if you see the AD carry and it's something like a Kai'Sa, this is a fine lane for you because you have a range of more damage in the lane phase. But when you, when you don't know what the AD carry is and Caitlyn's up, like, it's so obvious that they would pick it to me uh, to counter this, or at least something else with range, like a Varus, and, and then that, that your lane doesn't really work. That was a, a neat little dodge out there from Hubris, so that he doesn't get hit by the hookshot. Ends up winning the trade by a hair as well. Stun in onto the Morgana, gets suppressed as well. Everything going in favor of... Well, I'm going to pick up that kill. Flash being burned by Kenny as well. Down in the 1v1, Sway Lee gets the flash out of the itchy rat ace in the hole coming out just as a poking tool not gonna get the kill slow in on the hubris here comes the minion gets the knockback no ultimate available just yet hubris gonna go down in the end and another dead top lane i mean that that top lane i this is every top laner's nightmare right he's just constantly camped by this hacker room he's been ganked so many times you know, first time doesn't get anything. Second time, flash blown. And now, <laughs> after the, after Wild Terry has you know gotten a few items, Hecarim's got a few items. They have a damage to kill him uh, consistently, and they just continue to walk topside and get those ganks off. And Hubris, uh, he's had a rough one here, and he's going to give it the first hurt as a result of that. But yeah, life is tough when you're a top laner getting camped. Finding in, not good. So much damage coming out of the Caitlyn. There's the ignite. Hurt and is gonna pick up that one now. Sway Lee trying to get something back out of it. so much damage gets rooted up though, and that is the end of it. A little bit of BM there coming out, but now here comes Zohair. He gets one on the Rat and gets his ultimatum into the binding combo. He's stuck without a prey, but here comes Moi to answer them. Is gonna go down in the end. Ultimate onto Terry. Gets one Wom getting ulted and binded so much damage out of the Hecarim. The Ignite comes in, stopping all of Hubris's heal. Force the ultimate and dash away. There's the Black Shield. Everybody's coming down into this mid lane. This Rift Herald is about to time out as well. You need to pop it, Marjorie. Push a button. There. It this should be second brick going down in favor of the blue team. I think this should be the turret, and I think maybe a. a charge in the inner as well if they commit to the push dragon spawning those so they may they'll probably back off i think and just let the rift herald walk in and, and sway lee and kenny will be able to knock this thing down before it gets a charge off if they hit it okay never mind they're not going to <laughs> yeah they just didn't get the eye which is unfortunate because they do lose health on the non-regenerating tower uh ocean drake is and we'll have to see the fight that comes out of it. It's a 6 and 2 Syndra, really able to just do whatever they want. Hook lands onto the Cassiopeia, but it gets instantly cleansed once again. Scuttlecrab in favor of the blue team. Well, I'm going to get a good stun there. Guardian procs, but now Hubris going for the pinch. Minion going to go in. Hubris gets a 2 man knockup, but that is it. 
Now here comes the suppression onto everybody. Two men petrifying gaze! And Margarine takes one down, and now everybody is on the run. Hubris trades his life for Hecarim's. So that is one jungler down. Smite still available for the Weebs, but not for much longer. Zohair getting chased down. So much damage on this press the attack. Camille is in the hole coming through. Not enough to kill. Wom feels like he's thirsty for some blood, but he is going to miss out on that. While Terry able to hook shot in. Black Shield keeps him alive, and now Wom is going down. Here comes Marjoram, though, gonna get the stun, but they can't keep doing this. How many times will it happen? It won't this time. There is the ultimatum over the stand side, and another kill going over to the blue team. And Nessar used the ultimatum there as well. Got himself an untargetable frame, and then as he came down, got the physical health shield so that he could uh, absorb the damage from the Draven and not go down. And they find the kill on, on him on the backside. You're gonna find the Ocean Dragon as well. Uh, which they've given up two important dragons already here in the Infernal and the Mountain, uh, but it's nice to pick up the ocean here and, and a good one fight for them, killing the Draven once again, who has not cashed in a single time this game. And if they keep resetting him, you know, he's he's just not going to have a lot of use of that passive. The Syndra very strong right now, the Skarner very strong, but uh, they have not been able to win the team fights for them. The, the rest of the damage just isn't there. Yeah, I mean, the decision making is coming into question for the Weebs, too. Because they they've come so close to these team fights, and there are team fights that they really should be like stomping. I feel because they're so far ahead. You know, Skarner three one four before that second skirmish. You know, Syndra was five and one, and so I mean, it, these champions are so far ahead of their counterpart, kill and you know item wise, but they're just not pulling it together in the in the skirmishes and the fight. And they're what seemed like a really good pinch there in favor of the Weeb was just completely blown up, especially by that two-man petrifying gaze from Marjorie there, who, until that point, it seemed like they were struggling a little bit. Well, I mean, you look at the item disparity in the AD carry position in the top side, it's significant, right? And that's where all the gold lead is right now. Um, 412, and that, that's the issue, right? Like, sir, your mid and jungle are very strong, but for, for Weeb Edition, they don't really have, you know, like any advantages anywhere else, right? Hubris gonna find himself on the wrong end of a knife leg. Already down below half HP. Doesn't. There it is. Just now gets the ultimate back. Already forced to resurrect. Ace in the hole gets canceled out by it, but I don't think it really matters. Oh no! <laughs> Hubris with the output gets the bait flash, and now Terry is on the run. Is gonna get impaled. Oh, oh man. This is just. Crazy miscommunication here from them, while Terry eventually going to get Ooh. shut down by the Draven. Not very many stacks, though, so it wasn't very much gold. Still yeah. worth to give him the kill, though, so they can get him back in the game. They need the Draven if they're going to have consistent DPS and team fights. They need that Draven, so it's still worth to give the kill, and it's a shutdown. So I like the idea there. Again, a little bit of miscommunication on where they wanted to pull him, but they get it to the Draven in the end. Margarine going to get snared up under tower, just to, but there's no ultimate on Hubris. Uh... That was that was pretty thinking. Uh, a little bit that too was a questionable, aggressive there. Uh, that was a questionable play there. The turret was just sitting on a sliver of health as well. If the auto came through on the turret, they would have taken he would have taken it down and potentially gotten the solo kill as well. So Margarine maybe wanted that one back, but still they get the inner turret here and are looking to maybe break open this and No, they'll back off, play this one safe, go establish vision on the Baron and try and take that next after backing and getting few more I yeah bit of a misplay there from Ardrin, but he was just really really excited about getting his third kill of the game um like you said one more auto makes the difference there between getting the kill and what we saw uh bear now is the play though we see some warding coming out here and we do see the buddy system from zohair and kenny really great to see that we don't always get to witness it and we see a lot of supports dying due to not having friends actually it, it's an underrated thing to point out right we, we see it and then people a lot of people would just see that and like they wouldn't care but that's a, a very good sign that kenny and zohar are on the same page they know what needs to be done they know they need to be there clearing out those wards if they don't do that i've seen so many barons just taken it's like wait they're on baron well yeah you guys we kind of need the war to make sure we know but uh, luckily, Kenny and Zohair on top of that, so they will know if a Baron is being taken. Or at the very least, if someone's in their jungle, they can play a bit more defensively because of that. They, they don't have to be scared walking through there. And then 
um, you know, they had to be so worried about it because there's such a good Baron taking team coming at them between Camille, Cassiopeia, Hecarim, Caitlyn, and Morgana. Like every single one of those champions is really good at taking Baron. Yes, Weebs have the Earth Drake, but it's they're they're 80 carries so far behind that you're really not concerned about a quick Dragon Taker right, or Baron Taker. Right yeah, the 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 Mound Drake really nice for Weebs to be on their side, but hold on, Hubris, Hubris finding himself on the wrong end of a horse once again. He's gonna try and make it over that wall, but it's not looking good. Forced to get the ultimate, barely making it out on a, a sliver of HP. Uh, and I think, oh, good flash from Zillahair, but Minion is on the chase. Looks like he'll get out okay, but a big flash to be down now. Zillahair, he has to have the blast going to get into the, the Baron pit. And uh, he will have the light to take it back out, but he's got to find a way to get in first. And this is pretty disastrous. This is an Infernal Drake. It's going to go down so incredibly quick. And for a team that's already winning fights, they're just going to win it that much harder now. Yeah, it, it was nice. You know, that was one of the things that would keep me. Well, hold on. Sway Lee. Sway Watch Lee out, buddy. getting dragged back into the team by his support. That is not where he's supposed to be when they fight, but another good land here from Kenny. Been very aware of where his teammates are this game and has been able to keep them safe a few times. Hubris trying to make something happen here. Goes over the wall, does lose about 50% of his HP for that decision, though. So we'll have to see if he keeps making these, because eventually... So eventually it's, a, it's an interesting situation, because eventually he does that play, it works, and they get a kill because he's Aatrox and he can do stupid things like that. Or he never gets to that point of, you know, endgame demon and he keeps making these same plays and dies every time for it, right? And so we'll have to see what either the like the team call is for it or, or if we just see him, you know, kind of take a more passive role. Yeah. Well, like I said, Zohair doesn't really have a way into the pit, right? He, he's not a champion with a dash here, and no blast gun means it's going to be hard for him to contest and try and get a steal. The only way for him to really get it in is if, uh, you know, Kenny hooks the Baron and throws Lantern over and they go over together, which means you're sacrificing two players instead of one. So that that would mean that the steal's even less, uh, you know, the attempt of the steal's even less, less worth it. You know, the risk to reward is becomes worse for you. So just keeping wards on this is, is important, but um, it's going to be tough for them to really stop them from actually doing it if they start it right now. They have an ocean to heal up as well, so um, we we Edition is not in a great spot right now with the Draven. He's going to get Infinity Edge soon, but like I said, he went for the Bloodthirster this time. Uh, and that means that he's going to be way behind in this sort of crit uh, items, right? He's going he's gonna to have a Bloodthirster and Infinity Edge, that's great, but crit is... That's where you, you want to have a ton of crit at this stage of the game. You're, you're transitioning from just having flat AD uh, to to really needing that uh, the crit chance. So uh, the Draven, because of his itemization choice, I think is even further behind effectively in these team fights than he would. Oh, really good play there from Terry to dodge out on the Q stun. Let's get tangled up by the chains there. Now he's on the way worse end and here does go down super duper low. Both of them have the ultimates. They're popped at the same time. Terry using that AD shield so effectively, but one more auto attack's all it's gonna take. And Hubris. That's, that's what I'm talking about. He, instead of making the like, quote unquote, stupid play of just going for the fight, he plays it super safe, backs off, and doesn't end up getting the. And because he dragged his jungler all the way down there for help, they're going to end up losing the Baron because of it. Unless some insane steal comes through. Kenny's trying. We saw the Draven ultimate come out as well, but it doesn't connect. Blue team does pick up that. that Baron, and that is a kind of 12th level intellect play, just like this one from Terry! Absolutely catching out Hubris. Backing on a ward, how much more on point can your name be? Well, that play went just terribly for them. They tried to bring Zohair down to the bot lane to get a pick on Wild Terry. They knew they were probably going to lose Baron for it, but they thought, hey, it's worth get a kill back here. This Baron's going to go over anyway, right? We can't stop that. But then Terry is able to make the great escape, runs all the way back to his tower. Zohair backs off, you know, <laughs> Hubris finds himself backing on a ward and a fantastic awareness there for Terry to come back in and find the solo kill. So things are looking really good right now. Uh, and on the other side for Weeb Edition, 
they are not having a great mid game here. This has gone pretty disastrously. This Draven is nowhere near being ready to team fight. The Caitlyn, though, she's almost there, pretty much uh, ready. Just waiting on that second zeal item, and then she's going to be a menace. But as it is right now, she's, uh, she's destroying towers at an incredible clip with these Baron minions. Yeah, and another really important thing to note is that this side lane duel, this Aatrox Camille, you know, like you said, it's a skill matchup. And just due to the items itself, it seems like Camille is just constantly winning. We do see a bit of a kerfuffle, you know, Kenny trying to make the, the minion back off. Ultimate coming out of Hubris, but he's so low. And I mean, you can see Camille full HP. Another really good cleanse out of Margarine as well. He's been on top of the cleanses with the Thresh Hooks of this game. The Death Sentence says, you know, when it's landed, he's just never hung around for it. He's just pieced out and been like, all right, good try. It's a big cooldown, but it's definitely worth it to prevent a death there. And hold big on. engage here. <laughs> oh, boy. But his fear still comes in. Wom goes down to Margarine. And now they're trying to force their way back out. Weebs are trying to defend their base. But Weeb Nation is not coming together as one. They're too divided. There's too many genres involved, and they are losing their inhibitor. And they Should lose this main inhibitor here. Bot lane inhibitor also exposed. Top inhibitor turret is exposed. So they may go over with that. They still have Baron buff for a few more minutes. I think it's. I think honestly they should push bot side here and go for the second inhib uh, instead. Not back. But they want the Inferno, it looks like. So they're going to say, all right, we want the permanent boost instead of this inhibitor here. I think both calls are good here, and, and they prioritize the drag. Yeah, I think this the double Inferno is a pretty good call. You know, we're seeing how much damage they're putting out already. You know, boost it that much more. You know, now the Camille wins this side lane so much more. And, you know, these all-in engages from this, you know, high-speed Hecarim now completing the Sterics Gage. Is that much more effective and we saw how much damage he did to the syndra just off of that you know, like messed up ultimate like he didn't even really connect because of the impale and he still put mom in a compromised position and was able to just you know secure the team fight there that was a really good impale actually by zohar in that fight really messed up the heck room but like you said he still got a ton of damage off but zohar did everything he could in that fight to try and help out and, and in the end it was just not an uh, because of that gold lead right now, it, it's it's continuing to grow after all these turrets they've taken out here. Um, you has got super minions to farm here. you got minions coming in constantly in the base for Weeb Edition. But um, they're still significantly behind in the gold here. And with that second Infernal going over, the effective gold, the effective stats you're going to have for fights, uh, it's not in their fight there either. Yeah, when one champion's R button is that much more effective than your own, it becomes really hard to deal with. And we're seeing that in the Hecarim. It's such a disruptive champion. You know, no matter how far ahead, he just happens to be ahead. But it wouldn't have made that much of a difference were he not, I feel. But we do see a last dish effort. Going to get one stun. Doesn't get the Petrifying Gaze. But here comes the Redemption. Here comes the Snare on to Minion as well. He's going to pop that stopwatch. There goes down Zohair. While Terry is in the base this whole time, taking the second inhibitor for his team. He can win this fight. He goes down on the ultimatum, kills him before the ultimate even comes out. That is Hubris going down, and this could be it. They're onto the top lane inhibitor. It is the ultimate, and there goes down another carry for Weebs. And now third inhibitor down. All that's left is the Nexus, and it is not long for this world. One tower goes down, the fight is on. Sway Lee goes down to Wild Terry once again. There's the second Nexus turret, and here onto the Nexus themselves. And it is going to be the first game going over to Twelch level intellects. And a big game one win for them. I, I felt even the top side didn't win very early on, right? I thought Hubris did a good job of absorbing the pressure. You know, Zoar didn't get a ton done early in terms of the first couple levels. But when he got Predator and his ultimate, he started really impacting the map. There's so had some great fights in mid lane. And then Mwami had a very good uh, two solo kills, I think, throughout that game here. So he, he had a very good performance. But I think the real issue was that the bot lane just kind of counterpicked itself. Uh, by picking the, the Thresh and the Draven there into the, the Caitlyn. 
in the Morgana there. And then, you know, with that losing matchup, they sort of pick themselves into and Hubris getting camped up topside and making his life very difficult. They just really weren't set up to succeed uh, throughout that game. They just kind of, you know, lost those couple matchups there and fell behind. And as a result, you know, you, you saw the Caitlyn get out of control there at the end and a few macro mistakes as well cost them the Baron and, and cost them the game eventually. Um, and it's hard to lose a game when you are named Hubris. I think that's a little bit uh, unfortunate for him, but I still like the name and uh, hopefully they can come back here in game two. Yeah, I mean, I would like to see some different picks coming in from the side of the Weebs. You know, maybe a more maybe a more meta AD carry. I, I feel like their team comp otherwise was fairly reasonable. Um, you know, picking the Skunner at that stage of the game. You know, you already lost the Hecarim and the other two top tier picks were banned away. I definitely think. I definitely think Skarner does more than Jarvan in this game. So I don't I don't think the jungle pick was, you know, as egregious as the Draven. Uh, so we'll have to head into game two, taking a look at that. So stay tuned with us, guys. We'll be right back as we set up for the Risen Dominate pre-made week six. And we'll be right back.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Risen Dominate pre-made week six matchup between Weeb Edition and 12th level intellect. So they took it pretty convincingly, I would say, once they got going. Yeah, once they got going, that was the key, right? It was it was a little bit up in the air in the early game. You know, they lost uh, an Infernal Dragon, a Mountain Dragon. Things seemed to be okay on the top side of the map and in the mid lane. But as the game uh, continued to progress, the Draven never got really a kill to cash in on. He got the one, but that came super late in the game. And uh, yeah, it, it just seemed to sort of roll out of control from there. You know, in the mid game, things started going well. They started taking the Dragons. They eventually got the Baron and then just kind of ended it. Did a very good job. Uh, I, I really liked their macro at the end of the game. It didn't get greedy. I thought they might go for a bot lane inhibitor, but they played it safe and, and took, uh, you know, the dragon backed off. Like, I just really like how they played that, that late game situation. Really good stuff in them in game one. Yeah, and we'll have to see if they decide to change up their pick ban at all. Um, so far, we do see very similar bans coming across. The teams have obviously switched side. Uh, Weeb edition now blue, Twelch uh, on the red. Um, but we do see a change. Morgana ban from Weave Edition. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. If they want to go back to an aggressive AD carry, just an aggressive bot lane in general, banning with the Morgana, I think, makes a lot of sense. They could have also tried to like leave it up at, at first pick it and do something crazy like that. And you can obviously be aggressive with Morgana, but this seems like a much, you know, just more a simple solution to the problem. Just get rid of the champion here. Um, and now we have uh, still a lot of junglers up. Hecarim is going to be up, I believe. The Rek'Sai is banned away. But that's about it for junglers, unless you consider Tom Kench in the jungle. But uh, I like to unbench the Kench, but I don't think many people do. Yeah, and so they do decide to pick up the Hecarim um, with Sijuani still available. I think they might be a little shell-shocked, because I honestly think that Sijuani is a stronger champion between the two of them. Um, just because of the amount of early game pressure you get just by the champion existing. Um, and having CC on literally four abilities um, is just so big. Still, CC on four abilities is nice, but you know what's also nice? Killing people, and uh, Hecarim can do that. So, I I still I still think Hecarim is better to pick if you're gonna first pick a jungler here because I think he wins the one v one early on against the Sejuani with the with the Conqueror rune. Um, and he's just generally just so good. Now, Sejuani, late game situation, I prefer her, but Hecarim is so strong right now, I feel like you can't deny him. But a few responses here that can be pretty good into Hecarim. And we do see it being countered by the Jarvan, or not countered per se, but um, I can't think of the English word. But we do see Jarvan coming out. He is going to be another high-pressure jungle ganker. Uh, especially early on, because he can gank as early as level 2 if he does go red buff first. And with Orianna, again, once again, in a mobile mid laner for Mom and the Draven pick once again, when we know literally nothing about Twelch's bot lane, it makes me kind of worried for the Weave Edition. Yep, they're going aggressive with the Draven pick again. Um, but since they have the Hecarim, I, I like this pick a bit more... Uh, again, and Hecarim in the Morgana band, I should say. Um, I like it a bit more this way, because now there's not like a hard counter to like, all right, we pick an engage champ and, and we pick Morgana and Caitlyn. You know, it's like, it's not, we're not going to have that again, so that, at least that's good for them. But uh, the Jax can be good in the Hecarim as well. The Counter Strike is a great ability overall here. And uh, we'll, we'll see what the Ordonic and Draven can do, but you're right, like two immobile carries here, not great into something like a Jarvan. And. It gets a little bit more worrying now that we see a Nautilus pick. Uh, you know, arguably more CC than the Morgana itself. I think Draven is in a bit of a rough spot again. Yeah, he's, he's definitely under a lot of threat here. Already three champions picked up that can kill him uh, very easily, or at least set up kills on him very easily, right? Um, he, he's in, in, in a, a kind of a rough spot. Now, it could be Nala support, could be Nala's mid here with the AP build. But um, if it is Nala support and you get something else to support him in, in the bot side here that can uh, abuse that Nala's lack of range, you can maybe make something happen because one of the biggest weak, one of the biggest strengths for Draven um, and one of the biggest weaknesses for his opponent, if you are outranged by him, 
he just he just autos you constantly and you can't walk up to the wave to, to do stuff here and with the kaisa lock in i'm a bit worried for itchy rat right now yeah it's very different situation than what we saw last time you know caitlin band away they have to go to the next best thing um everybody can play kaisa it's a pretty easy champion for what you get out of the champion and like you said, it is a bit of a shorter range, so you are just going to keep getting constant axes in your face. And we'll have to see how the Nautilus can prevent that. You know, last game was prevented by the threat of Dark Bindings and the Tormented Soils, and Nautilus being that melee champion is actually in danger of the stand-aside pressure that can start a gank, that can deter a gank, that can, you know, just generally displace them and open them up for damage or taking damage um we'll have to see how we can get in and pressure the draven off of the wave pressure the draven you know into not doing draven things and when we pair it with a brahm you know notably and historically one of the best melee support counters i think this drain this lane actually got a lot more dangerous for itchy rat and um i can't read it because it's all blurry on my side yeah this is actually how you play draven right <laughs> you find a weak 80 carry in the laning phase like a kaisa who has low range she doesn't have any sustain and she won't have any sustain from her support either or, you know with that nautilus and you just take it to him you pick up a champion like braum one one winter's bite and if if draven has blood rush up you kind of have to flash like it, it's so it's such a terrible lane for them right now um itchy rat like he's just he, he's just not in a good position right now this is really the, the ideal draven game here for sway lee if you're gonna play draven this is when you do it um obviously he's got to deal with the jarvan later he's got to deal with you know Jax. but in lane phase this should be complete stomp for the the brahm draven lane into the nautilus and and, and kaisa it's just not good for them at all um but as you know like i say that still the jarvan's a problem um and, and he's got to worry about that in the team fights he, he's he can definitely get countered but uh you know it seems that maybe the team fights aren't the option um they've picked up the fjord in the top side here which i was talking about into the atrox being very good but you know the jacks can be good as well you repost the counter strike he, he you definitely win lane against the jacks early on now late game it comes down to who's ahead what kind of happened what transpired what the gold is like but early on you should be in a good position to win 1v1 um certainly before level six and and after that as long as you're as long as you're pairing the counter strike or at least dashing away from it then you should be fine on that end so i like the pick here you also got early game pressure from the hacker he can maybe make a trip bot side and guarantee a kill for them so really like this second game draft here being on the blue side really helped them out it seems and banning away the morgana also so i really like uh, the draft here and uh we'll see if they can make this draven pick work yeah, and I think something to note is that we see the aftershark, aftershock Jarvan. Um, so I definitely would think that he's going to be going for a much more defensive build path. You know, maybe going that Cinder Hulk jungle item instead of Warrior, um, and being just a beefier frontline. And I think that's the ideal build path as well because we've seen so many Jarvan jungles in the past go that Warrior and then build like Black Cleaver into tank. And by that point in the game, you're so gold starved that you just simply cannot keep up with the true tanks of your opponent. And, you know, Jarvan's never going to out damage a Hecarim. So him building full damage might give him like an edge on to like Sway Lee. But when it comes to like the team fights and when it comes to the skirmishes, he's going to lose those nine times out of ten. It is interesting he's gone for the Aftershock. Conqueror has been the most common. Even with the Cinder Hulk pickup, usually Jarvans go for Conqueror nowadays. Uh, with the Aftershock, yeah, you get more for tanky. The team fight should be much better for you. Still, you're losing out on damage. The 1v1, you certainly won't, but you probably wouldn't move Conqueror anyway against Hecarim. So I think it's interesting pickup. Still could mean he's going for Warrior and then will build tank afterwards. I've seen people do that. Um, Bit of a sneaky invade. They're on a ward, though, and they don't land any anything and they can't even kill them so they get sniffed out they are gonna back off now i yeah, like the attempt to invade the brahm great level one and you have a draven as well good level one champion as long as he catches that first axe and he, and he stacks 
up that press the attack here, which is I haven't didn't touch on that in game one, but he's actually going for press the attack, which is interesting. A lot of Dravens, um, well, if you, if you go to Draven subreddit, you'll just see them moaning about old Conqueror, um, because that rune was great for Draven, and this new Conqueror isn't. Um, but there's just like this thing, like what keystone do you take as Draven? Because you know, press the attack's great, but proccing it's pretty hard. Um, and, and same thing with Conqueror. It's like it's good when you stack it, but it's kind of hard to do so. Um, you know, so he just kind of misses that old keystone for him. And, and Sway Lee thinks that the Percy attack is the best. And uh, with tanks on the roster, I can't necessarily argue with him. Uh, we'll give him pressure on the Jarvan later in the game if he does go for that Cinder Hulk route. Yeah, and as a player who actually enjoys playing League of Legends, I say death to old Conqueror. That was not a fun lane with Draven. You know, he's just farming along, and all of a sudden you get hit with like a 200 damage axe at level 1. No thank you. So, I mean, you are right though, there really isn't a superior, like a standout keystone for Draven, realistically. Um, but press the attack is really good. And, you know, it, he might struggle a little bit early on to actually get all three proc, but just due to the all-in nature of this bottom lane, I feel like he'll get opportunities to do it. Margin gonna miss the uh, singularity there. Yeah, the, the, the argument I've seen a lot of people is like, if you're getting three autos, you're probably winning a trade anyway. So it's like, well, I kind of want something that helps me in the first couple autos as well, but... Yeah, press attack still could be good here, and then Oz will be tanky, so he'll definitely get an opportunity to use it. It's just how effective and how often he can, he can get it off, and uh, they've already got the push going on. You can see why this bot lane is much better for them. Uh, the Caitlyn Morgana, one of the better lanes into any sort of Draven lane, so uh, he feels much better about this matchup and already getting the push on. Should get some pressure on the tower as well. Yeah, I'm a little sad he went with this. Oh, man, it's so good. This, this Fiora pick is so crazy. Oh, man. Uh, one more. Flash yeah, flashes. There it is. First blood coming out in favor of Hubris. Tried to hold on to his flash, but it ended up being necessary in the end. And it didn't matter for Wild Terry, who ended up going down eventually. Yeah, tra flash trade there and the kill means Hubris is in a fantastic spot now. Uh, the the Jack can't really run away uh, as easily and he's got the kill he's going to be in a great spot in the lane he's got this wave pushing in so he's gonna be able to make it crash pretty easily even after wild terry uh tp back so he's in a great situation now Minions but mid lane we got a problem super low gonna get the aftershock proc though mom forced to flash over the wall to follow from minion though one more and that is another kill for the jungler of 12th level intellects so his first Terry, of the game he's done a lot this series yeah, the, 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 there was a fantastic gank coming in. Red, the lane, was pushing in. And Wami was actually winning that trade significantly. Margarine was running out of mana, running out of health. But a good gank. Uh, you know, salvage a situation. They get the kill. Blow the flash here. So, while top went well for Hubris, mid lane not so much for Wami. And, and Margarine now has advantage there. Hubris gonna go in and... You know, while Terra was able to dodge out the repost there, because it would have stunned, but it can't aim it once you press it, so it's just kind of stuck there. You yeah, see so that, unfortunately, Hubris is going to have to force to TP back. He didn't back when the wave was crashing into the turret, uh, which was kind of a mistake here. He didn't control the wave very well, and as a result, he has to blow the TP here. I think he wanted to stay for team at. I think that was what he was greeting out for, but because he did that, it sort of cost him uh with that tp as well as a little bit of, uh you know not getting the wave set the way you wanted it to yeah you know like you said does burn the tp now trying to set up the wave in such a way that you can get some jungle pressure up and really secure the lane but we do see hecarim favoring the bottom sign counter strike once again hubris is fighting in a massive minion wave though so he is going to end up losing this one pretty heavily bad trade from hubris there honestly he comes out ahead because he is ahead right now, and, uh, you know, you're a pretty good champion when she procs her vitals, but she he should not have traded in that minion wave. He should not have, uh, you know, gotten stunned by that Counter-Strike as well, so he just a few mistakes there for him, but he's still in a good spot here, more ganks mid. Yeah, knows that that flash is down and that Orianna is such a non-moving champion. We do see the counter in from Zohair, though. Lots of damage. There's the red proc. 
And that's kind of the difference there between the two smites. He didn't get the slow, even though the flag and drag was able to get him out. Uh, we do see a pause coming in. Chat is asking what happened. Not sure if it's a ping spike or if somebody disconnected just yet. But oh, we do see ours in the chat. Tween it is ready to go. So just a quick 30 second pause. Now, as we wait for them to actually institute the R, you know. Only one side's readied up. So just. Oh, I I saw ours on both that's Marjorie and Minion there, so. We're waiting on. Oh, Zoe Hair typed R. Oh, they did. Never mind. Um, Never mind. So tell me about this mid lane a little bit, because I think something that uh, is a newer feature thanks to some buffs that Lux received, honestly, a while ago, where her E procs twice now, um, is I think she's doing very well in these trades with, with Oriana, another shield abusing mid laner when it comes to the 1v1 trade. You know, a lot, a lot of people will use that Oriana E, like at the start of a fight, to you know, dodge a lot of damage and then use the distortion to, you know, trade back. But I feel like Lux is doing a really good job of using her own shield to really mitigate a lot of it. The shield times are actually very important here. When you do that, you know, is it on the burst of the abilities, the ultimates? Um, so. Uh, oh no! Oh boy. <laughs> oh no! Well, that's actually really bad now, and um, Marjorie's gonna be forced to back. If he had gotten the blue, he might have been able to run back to the lane and, and, uh, Continue to push here. He's gonna go back and get a lost chapter, which is nice, but yeah, loses the blue buff there. Um, so, a bit so realistically, there. realistically, that was punishment for having his back canceled. Minion tried to get a back off there. We do see a bit of an engage coming in here. Counter strike not getting dodged up. Here's the ultimate from Hubris, though. Needs to proc more vitals, needs to get more. Wall is there, and there it is eventually. Just had to wait for that Q cooldown to come back up. And another solo kill for the Fiora. That is very big for the Fiora. Picking up that solo kill is Zohair. He's down a level. I don't know if you want to invade on this, buddy. Yeah, Zohair down a level, like you said. Procs the Conqueror, but Margarine is there to help out. Gets himself a red buff. And that was just crazy greedy from Zohair. He tried to dash in and kill the baby chicken and ended up losing it anyway. Uh, so he lost the 10 gold on the chicken and then lost 300 gold for, for his life. There's a good hook onto the Draven. Not a whole lot of follow up from Ichi Rat though, not level 6. Yeah, they, they need to hit level 6 if they want to actually potentially kill the Draven on one of those hooks. But Swaley and Kenny, I think, still winning this, this matchup here. You can see the CS lead. Uh, you know, not humongous, but it is a you know wave worth of CS here and it's pushing back into them. So that, that's pretty good. I also took out a plate or two down on the bot side, so that's good as well. But you're hoping for a kill at some point in this lane here before, you know, you need, you need to stay cash on the raven. It has to happen at some point, otherwise the pick just really doesn't start to take off. Yeah, and we see CS differentials happening in just about every lane in favor of Weeb Edition. You know, top lane up, almost two full waves, mid lane up. Uh, quick math say two waves and then the draven a full wave by himself and looking to get a little bit more hook lands on to kenny here comes damage ichirak gonna proc that vital and there is the ultimate from hurt and as well kenny staying alive for just a second longer now the hecarim has joined the target acquisition is not very good in favor of weeb edition hurt and is gonna keep his jungler safe what ends up being a one for zero in favor of 12th level intellects burns a lot of cooldowns in their favor yeah a lot of cooldowns blown and uh that that gank was really executed fantastically the double aftershock just made it so hard to potentially trade back here and talking about trading back wild terry's having a difficult time two levels up for hubris now and uh the gold lead is pretty significant that cs lead also continuing to grow here so he's in a rough spot. But in the bot side, you know, Hernandez goes in, proxy Aftershock. He takes literally no damage in combination with the shield. Then, all right, Minion comes in, he proxy Aftershock, and his flag and drag. He takes barely any damage with his, you know, Aftershock and shield. 
Like, it's pretty tough for the Draven to do much of anything there. Even if he was focusing on target the entire time, how much you can do. This is the power of the after shock. And Minion uh, was, and was pretty low at the end of that. Had he gone a more offensive summoner, he probably does go down there. Because he probably does to the Draven, who was one, maybe one and a half autos away. Ultimate being procced by Hubris once again. The counter flash gets it again. Three in a row. Solo kills from Hubris. His jungler is just looking back from afar saying, man, I really could have used that gold. Minion gonna get the blue smite onto Mwam. There's the ultimate forces the flash, and that's worth. Like if you just walk up and smite and you get a flash out of it, man, you're feeling so good. Yeah, the cataclysm used to, to bait out that flash, but worth it in you know with that gank. Getting the flash out of Mwam is good. Still has the cleanse available if he's in the one building as Marjorie. He can cleanse that root, so it's not a big deal. But another gank for Minion could spell his doom. Uh, this Draven, again, still is not cashed in. Hasn't died, though, which is key, right? Keeping those stacks up is big. Um, and, and right now, if you look at the map, pretty much all the lanes are not going well uh, for Weeb. The only good thing for them right now on the map is top lane. And they're getting plates here. They're getting some leverage off of that. But they're losing the bot side, at, you know, as a result here, they, they lose the dragon. They're, they're probably just going to lose pressure overall here. Zora is actually pretty pushed off the skull crab because his top player is back in bait. Yeah, that was a, a 1v1, and Zohair had smite, so I don't know why. I mean, just go for it, man. What's the worst that happens? You're Hecarim. You have Ghost and your ultimate available. I don't know. I go for that play. Was worried, I guess, someone else was there, but. They kind of knew where everyone was, so I don't, I don't really know what the what, what his concern really was. Yeah, decided to play it safe. Giving over a kill to Wild Terry here would be really bad, because then he gets back in the game, and then all of a sudden your Fury isn't as useful as you're supposed to be. So I can understand playing it safe on that end as well, but yeah. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure. Probably could have gotten this kill crap. Still, though, like I said, top side is, is, the, is the advantage here for, for the Weeps, and they're able to get the Rift Herald here, which is big. Um, that could get them something here, but they need to continue to leverage Hubris and, and hope he can, you know, get them the pressure they need in the mid game to sort of get them back in this one. Because right now, you know, mid's fine, right? It's actually CS lead there, but he did die. Um, and bot lane, you know, again, it's CS lead there, but again, you know, Braum died. So they're, they're, they're not super far behind in those lanes, but they're not ahead, uh, really. Dodging out on the Counter Strike once again, but winning off of the. Plates pops the ultimate needs to get in, but the wall is there. It's not enough though. And now another drag on to Sway Lee. Ends up worse for wear. Wom uh, gets a little bit caught. There's the cataclysm in, gets the two-man shockwave, but man, this hurts. Is still alive though. You know, Margarine missed literally every ability. They do get him in the end, but first brick is gonna go down in the top lane in favor of Hubris. And now Kenny going really deep for this cannon minion, and it's not going to work out. Hurt and is picking that one up, trying to get the cash out for Sway Lee. He's so low. There it is. 500 money in the bank. He gets the cash. And now TP's in from both top laners. Hubris, can you take the 2v1 with no ultimate? I don't think you can. But in the mid lane, Margarine goes down to the Conqueror proc and just action everywhere. 100% worth, though. I mean, looking at that play, the Draven cashes in. Sure, you know, you lose a couple people, but it's worth... Well, hold on. Hubris, uh, Hubris, my friend. Here, oh, he gets... Not the... He gets a stun, but he doesn't get the stun. And so now he's forcing them back. That's the perfect vital placement for him. He's going in so hard. One more. Can he make it happen? Doesn't have flash. So hurt, Nandis survives. Well, Hubris, a fantastic outplay in the 2v1, almost gets one back, forced the flash out of the board. He played that about as brilliantly as he could have. Now, he is up four, you know, he's up four kills here. So it makes it a lot easier, but good job by him now. And, and uh, already got that top turret down. This is a great situation for them. I would actually like to see them move Fiora back out to the top side, though. I think he should clear this wave and just back um, because he wants to be in a long lane against the Jack. He doesn't want to be in a short lane uh, against him. Yeah, I think they're thought uh, need the global gold there. We need help from friends to make sure that everybody can come out ahead. Uh, and so they want to get that that tower gold in favor of them. Oh, another big root, you know. Margarine doing pretty 
good on these roots, landing him when it kind of matters. And that cooldown was already so low with just the Ludens. You know, he's been throwing out binding after binding after binding. Zohair, gonna run away a little bit. And so, you know, in that bottom lane, we see Kaisa versus Fiora. Yes, yeah, so this is a weird uh, a lane assignment. Like, I, I wanted a Fiora topside to gain pressure on the map, but you kind of did that by going bot lane as well. Um, because they kind of sent team members over and then they left and like they were just letting them siege mid. I don't really understand the defensive uh, sort of decision making there. Um, it just doesn't make sense a lot by by intellect. I think they should have done something different, uh, you know, because they've given up so much damage on this mid lane turret. But if you are right now, her job is just to create pressure and she's doing that. She needs to either be taking towers or creating pressure and, and allowing her team to get back in the game because she's their strong point right now. Everyone else is struggling. The Draven's in a, in a good spot, but he he's not like snowballed yet by any means. So uh, this game really is on her back right now. Build coming out from uh, going BF Sword, Pickaxe, Pickaxe. You know, obviously all going to be put to good use between the Infinity Edge and the Ginsu's Rage Blade, and it looks like they're trying to shortcut their way to getting that Q upgrade um, instead of going for the Crit Cloak or the or Recurve Bow. Yeah, just looking, I believe, for that Q Evolve, and um, he, he does have it, so uh, makes sense here. It gives you a lot more fighting power. And, I mean, uh, um, pretty tanky. Yeah, he, he doesn't go down too easy. The Aftershock will get a ton of value here, but, but he's super far ahead right now, and he's building all, like, tank items. It's going to be super hard to kill him, but he, he also isn't going to do any damage at all. Like, he, he his base damages are pretty good, don't get me wrong, but it's, like, not enough to actually win a team fight. He's going to need the Kai'Sa and the Lux to get in there and do damage. And the reason I say the Lux and the Kai'Sa is because that is not coming from the Jax. The Jax is not doing damage for a while. It's so he gets Triforce, he's not doing anything, so they really have to rely on the mid and AD care positions here if they want, uh, you know, team fight to go there. Yeah, and that's going to be really reliant on the Lux hitting her abilities. You know, we saw that gank in the mid lane when Wom didn't have Flash, and the Cataclysm comes in just like it's about to now. There is the nuke, and it is so much damage on Wom. Two man stone from Terry as well. He's finally joining here, and now. Kenny sacrificing himself to keep his AD carry alive. Hurt Nandez taking that one from the Jack. Don't necessarily agree with that. But now Zohair, fast little pony, trying to run away. Itchy Rat says not today. And instincts in for the kill. And where was Fiora during all of Just like Captain Marvel, she's nowhere to be found. <laughs> well, it looks like there's not save this turret right they should get the mid lane oh, turret well no hold on there's a lot of damage swaley getting to cash and once again hurt Nandez seems to have disconnected or was flaming his team i don't know which it could be anything really and so they are not going to get that tower in the end the two attack damage duos coming out ahead for the weaves well yeah i was i was sloppy by the weaves to be perfectly honest at the start of that thing they went up too far the fjord wasn't really ready to put pressure on the map she hasn't she wasn't in position to actually you know move to a turret if they did clap and as a result you know they just kind of get collapsed on they don't lose anything for it you know in terms of intellect so they win the team fight uh the fewer it comes back and is like well I, I guess i have to come mid lane but because she's so fed and uh you know with the help from the draven who's also got a few items here they're able to save the turret and get a kill off the back of it so what, what really should have been them losing mid lane turret along with that fight turned it actually out okay for them um but you because they were sloppy, too greedy, went too far up on the map before this flip pusher was ready, and they get punished for it here. So, intellect, they certainly aren't gun shy, um, but they just need to know what they can take and not overextend and uh, give anything over, anything more over to this Draven and Fiora. And that Jax coming in, you know, he may be behind, but coming in and making it a numbers game before the Fiora can is really effective because. I mean, he was really kind of a uh, a Counter Strike bot in that last team fight before Hernandez stole his kill. And when all he had to do was press E, 
he did it really well. He was able to stun up the two carries that were there for the weebs and, you know, prevented a lot of damage coming back at them. Yeah, but now he has the Triforce, and that means he's no longer a Counter-Strike bot. He can actually put out some real damage now, so that is uh, an, a problem, right? The Jax is, is solid. Ooh. From downtown, actually going to get the connection and a lineup for the locks. Three men finals. And now Mini he goes on a rampage onto the Draven. Shut down for the Hecarim. And now Zohair trying to get out. He cannot escape. Now Wild Terry doing Jack's things in the background. Gets a triple kill and keeps going on. Is surviving thanks to the Conqueror proc. Is he going for the Quadra? Can he get it? They're going to flash out. And now Hubris is the only one left standing for the Weebs. And things are falling apart. Oh, once again, they get, they overextend, they get to Gree, but Hurt Hernandez takes advantage of it. A fantastic hook, like you said, from downtown, he finds him. And then a Cataclysm comes through from Minion, and the axes for Swaley just get dropped because he can't physically get to them. There's a wall there. He can't get over that. He can't find one axe. The second axe also dropped, and he does no damage after that. And uh, the pressy attack rune, pretty good, but, you know, like, he, he just wasn't able to proc with any meaningful damage damage because he had no access to, to you know actually do damage with so they, without draven there to do the damage the you know orion is in no position to to kill multiple members on the enemy team the shockwave was good uh, you know but it wasn't a huge game changing one there just was nothing there for them to actually win the fight for the weaves after a fantastic engage you know started the thing off for intellect that's what the fight they were definitely looking for here the jacks has now got five kills uh, out of nowhere you know, that Triforce, or the Triforce completion was humongous for him. And if you were, she still wins the side lane. But it, that matters more than it was before. She can't do it easily. She cannot overextend to get those kills. Yeah, when you look at that last team fight, when you compare the Shockwave, which only really landed onto Minion, versus the Final Spark, which landed onto Draven, Orianna, and Bra, and just really kind of annihilated them and set the fight up in favor of them. Jack's already down to half HP. Another big Hurt Nandez hook, but now Minions in the background. Gets the two carries in the Cataclysm once again. There's the clock, keeps him down. Terry picking up another kill, but now he's going down in the end. Cashed in for the change, and now more and more gold into the Draven. The Root's going to come in. There's the shield, but he goes down eventually. Sway Lee, you are not where you want to be, my friend. Is going to get trade killed by the Kaisa. And now Marjorie using that Scuttle Crab speed boost and that Cloud Drake final spark forces the fly. And that is not what you want to see this point in the game. Well, they overextend way too hard there. They won the team fight because of the power they still have on this Fiora and the raw damage he can output. You know, Swaley also with good hiding in that uh, team fight was able to take out the Jax, the biggest threat to him at this stage in the game, besides uh, the Cataclysm just generally is in terms of CC. Um, but they just got kited straight through the, the jungle there. The Cloud Drake came in you know, extra handy, the good disengages from Margarine, and uh, I mean, they just went too far. If they had just backed off, they could have taken the Dragon easy, but now they're in a, uh, a situation where they have to contest it. And they don't have their main damage dealers there. And Bomb, oh my god, what are you doing, my friend? He's forced to flash out, but Terry says, not today. What? You're going down, and now it's three members in the mid lane instead of at the dragon and the infernal. Going over to the 12th level intellects, and their four IQ points are really showing at this stage of the game. The game one from Wami, I thought was really good. I thought he played really, really well despite the loss. This game two has not been his game. He has really struggled here on the Orianna. Not what I what I would have expected to see from him. That time he just straight up faced uh, a brush. He but even if there's no one in there, like you still shouldn't go. Like it's just not a place you want to be there on the Orianna. Unfortunately, he dies because of it. It's right now. Ultimate on to the Kaiser tries to ult away, but not in time. Hubris just absolutely annihilating him. And that is the power that this Fiora wields. You know, does use the ultimate, but you know now she has control of the lane. She does have to worry about the Lux Jarvan combination, you know, waiting in the wing. But uh, I don't think she's going to be really all that worried. Yeah, she sh there's no, no one they can send to stop her, and any single person can. She she's still that strong. Two people, if Jarvan and Jax both come, then she has to worry about being in the side lane. But right now, she's pretty much untouchable there. Fear being started up, Smite available. 
But Minions is a level up here, so Denshaw to steal. He's got Blast Cone, so he can get in and out without using Flash. There's no... There's no teleport available. Final Spark in well. And now it is Danger Zone time. Baron and another big check coming over to Sway Lee, putting those music contracts to work. He's getting so big, and, you know, Jax is trying to, you know, compete. He's solo killing his Fiora now, and now he's taking towers, and now he has to fight into Baron buff, except he doesn't, because he killed Fiora. Well, I was going to say, no one can match Fiora. Then I looked at the inventory. He's got Spear of Shoujin. This is when the Jax turns on. Uh, this is this power spike I was waiting for. The Triforce Spear of Shoujin, Ninja Tabis, and Tiamat. The four best items in the game for Jax. Like, he is... This is when he comes online and really becomes a menace. From here on out, the, the, the reigning items he's going to pick up are going to be useful, but not as useful as these four. Because, like... Or these two, at least, right? With the Spear of Shoujin and Triforce. It, it is just such an insane power spike that even though you know, Hubris is, is still uh, ahead... You know, he he just he just can't win the one v one because Counter Strike's on a ridiculously small cooldown. He can't repost them all. You know, the Counter Strike blocks all the damage, so you can't actually uh, do anything. It's just it's just so hard for Fiora, an AP champion that does spell damage, then you just can't kill him because he's just got Counter Strike up the entire time. Not only that, using the you know boost in the stats as well with that ultimate it becomes that much tankier. And you know, even if you're dodging everything, being tanky really really does help dodging out on the repose and you can see the damage like how what does hubris do there hubris had zero counterplay there he just got bopped in the face is dead and it's unfortunate because he's playing for lack of a better word with so much early game hubris because he was so dominant in that early 1v1 where he was just wrecking jacks terry had no no anything in that early game where he went oh three solo kills and now Hubris is just like, I'm Fiora, I'm going to win. And then Terry's like, fuck, you're dead. And it's just really unfortunate to see because it, it might be game. Like, what do you do to stop Terry right now? Well, that's the ish thing is you don't, right? The, Hubris needs to back off. He needs to sit underneath the turret and just clear the waves. Well, it sticks items, I think... But now Hubris is behind after getting solo killed twice in the side lane. It, like, they, they've lost the power point of Fiora, and Jack is better in the team fight as well. So, there's really nothing they can. And if Fiora doesn't push her, it's great. Like, she pushes them okay, but, you know, like, even if she finds an opening without the Jax there, like, she's not going to, like, break open the base and take everything, right? They, they have a lot of time before she can actually do that. So, yeah, this this situation for Weebs is not great. Uh, they let the Jax get to a point where he can actually compete with the Fiora, which I didn't think would happen, right? But a couple sloppy plays, a couple overextend, and they give over kills. Now Intellect is, is back in this one because they have a super powerful Jax, and the rest of their team is doing well as well. Uh, uh, so, yeah, they're in a really good spot now after a, a terrible, terrible early game from the top side. Yeah, and like you said, the rest of the team is doing so well. You know, this Jarvan is so incredibly tanky. You know, between the Aftershock, the um, Cinder Hulk, I totally blanked on that. Now completing the Warmogs and the Kindle Gem, so much CC comboed, comboed with how tanky he actually is. And you can even just see, look at the, the screen there, you see the two health bars between the two junglers. So many more extra lines in favor of Minion. Um, and he's just never gonna die. And when you look at the rest of the team, you know, Lux on three items, you know, obviously no Mejais because it, it's a dangerous feast of but, you know, three critical items in the Ra Rabadon's Death Cap, Ludens, and the Zonyas, you know, so much damage, enough cooldown reduction to be a threat. And if anything connects, literally anything connects, it's just going to annihilate you. Yeah. Yeah. A ridiculous amount of AP on the Lux right now with the death cap complete. Um, the Jarvan is actually at an interesting point right, right now. He's got a ton of health, but very little resistance. It's just a ninja tabby there. So he's actually a lot squishier uh, um, than you think. Without Aftershock proc. If Aftershock is just proc, he's not going to die. But if it's not proc, he's actually kind of squishy. Um, Look in the top you know, lane. For the amount of gold he's invested in, in tanks and tank items here. But yeah, Fiora is on the run. Fiora's on the wrong side of the map, and 
things are things are so dangerous right now for the weebs. You know, the enemy eighty carry is a hair away from completing rune ends, which just completely shreds your entire team at that point. Um, being able to hit three members at a time with that dangerous passive of her doing percent health damage and just you know deleting people. Things are looking really bad. I mean, you're defending the turret for now, not for much longer though. Well, I'm gonna survive thanks to the Brom. There's the Glacial Fissure. Three man fear out of the Hecarim. Sway Lee money in the bank. Here's the TP in from Terry, counter striking, trying to stay alive. Hubris coming in as well, but CC in favor of the Weebs. But Matt Kenny is all by himself. Kurt Hernandez throws down the ultimate, trying to get them away. There's the stopwatch. Terry's so low. Counter Strike is not enough. He's going to go down, healing up the rest of the team. And now Hubris can run away with this team fight. Hurt Nandes is dead. There goes Itchy Rat. The only one left is Marjorie, who has no mana. He's going to go down as well. Shut down in favor of Mwam. And that is an ace for Weebin. Well, the only problem is they're on the wrong side of the map right now. They took a great fight and won it in a, in a dominating fashion there. A five for one. But they don't have Baron available for them because they're so freaking far away from it. They'll get the inner turret here, it looks like, with the Fiora and the Ocean Dragon. But the Baron's still up and on the table. And, and that team fight went terribly, right, for Intellect. But that was just because I think they set the team fight up poorly, right? This Jax is still super powerful. He almost killed the Draven there, despite being super low and, and having multiple people on him. But yeah, I, I worry if this next team fight, can they replicate that success? I'm not sure. They've got a, a very tanky Brom now, who's gone for completely tanked items now with the stone plate. Uh, which is very interesting here, and, and Draven's got the Guardian Angel, so a few more item spikes coming in, maybe they can make it happen, but they gotta find another great team fight like that. And they have the perfect instigator. There is this second Baron. They got the first one. They want to keep that momentum going and secure the second one as well, but if it goes down in favor of, you know, Twelch, it's going to be dangerous because there's not a whole lot of, you know, Baron empowered minion wave clear on the side of the weebs. You know, Oriana being their only real AOE wave clear kind of gets shredded by a, by a Baron empowered minion. Well, now Hubris down a level again. I think he loses the side lane here. Hubris dodging out the stun, but using that ultimate, it's not enough because the counter strike with the Spear Sojin is so good. Here comes the Hecarim though. No, does Sombrero on the Shockwave, but Hernandez, Sway Lee picking him up. Well, I mean, again, Hubris needs to calm down and he needs to stop taking the 1v1s. He can't win it until later in the game. Once he gets six items again, maybe he, he can Ooh. fight in that 1v1, but right now he's just not too far behind to actually. Itchy Rat tried to get, tried to cancel the ports and got popped for it. He doesn't, but I mean, they stopped the ports and now Wild Terry's in the base. And like you said, Jack's doing Jack things is very scary. And so he's now only forced against the Hecarim, but now Minion is going to be on Kenny's butt like a tick. He's going to eventually tick? Eventually? Eventually? Come on. Itchy Rats forced the TP in, or not to be an Ultra Instinct in to get the kill. It ends up trading from Wom, who's doing so much damage right now as well. Zohair going in. Shockwave once again not going to connect. Really unfortunate that they left it behind. I mean, they've been winning team fights out of him shock waves. That's the thing that's shocking to me is that they have hit, they've won set two team fights in a row now where the shock wave hasn't been big from Wami. He's, he's just straight up missed them sometimes here, uh, but still they've won. And now we'll see if they can get the smite on this Baron. 15 to 15, both jungler. Marjorie has the final flare available, doesn't decide to use it, gets the steal anyway with the EQ combo. And that is. That, I think that's one of the worst possible things that can happen to Weeb Edition right now. Oh my god. Yeah, losing the Baron is huge here. That's a humongous deal from uh, from Margarine, rather. Um, he, like, that, that that's just so big, because they've opened up the bot lane inhibitor as well here. The Jax picked that one up earlier on, and now he's got side lane pressure as well with the Baron. Things are very good now. Uh, this push should go in favor of them and should open up another inhibitor at least if they don't end the game off this, to be perfectly honest. 
I mean, yeah, they're sending Wild Terry back down to the bottom to compete against Hubris when realistically, he really needs to be in this top lane. He needs to let the super minions do their thing while he takes the other inhibitor. Because right now, what is he doing? He's doing literally nothing for his team, and they're struggling to get to the mid lane right now. Yeah, they're making it there just now, but they could have been doing something else this entire time that would be more productive than Jax just looking at minions. Yep, they need to find another team fight win here. I think engaging on the four is their best shot of winning. I don't know if going to the Jackson sideline is the right thing to do. I think they just need to hard engage on this four and hope they can win it. That Lux Shield is so big as well. Getting the double portion. Braum being the only one left to try and defend this tower. Oriana is trying to shield him up. Wom does have a bit of AP on his side, but this tower is going down eventually. Double caster, double cannon minion, excuse me, too strong. And they're losing more and more as they wait. They need to commit. Rom's going to go heal up, but they're going to lose another inhibitor off the back of this. They need to hard commit. That's, I think that's the only way they could stop this. This siege is not going their way. They don't have the range wave for them uh, to stop this thing. Like, the Orianna is just not enough because the Barons just don't take enough damage from her. Uh, Baron they minions, need, rather. Not yeah, multiple I mean, Barons. <laughs> they need... Oh, my game seemed to have hitched for a second. Um, but we do need the Hecarim Shockwave combo to actually land. That is what it's going to take for the Weeb Edition victory. And right now, they seem a really, they seem a little scared to pull that. I'm throwing up the shield, which is causing him to get hit by that life iron. Well, another. Their cannon minion, <laughs> pretty valuable. If you can just let it sit there, it takes out the turret for you. Yeah, because I mean, the option is Draven walks up to take it and then has to compete with Nautilus and Lux CC. That is so not good. Look at how O'Hare is. He's so far behind. Kenny is forced to walk up in Glacial Fissure and it doesn't even work. There's the Hecarim ultimate, not going to connect onto anybody. Minion just going to flag and drag away. And Jax this whole time is threatening the back line. Is zoning him off. If they went in there, he would have come in for the flank. And now they've got two inhibitors down. Minion's threatening. Or Demption comes down and the siege begins once again here for Intellect. Jarvan's in the base. It's minion, he's not worried. He's just going to flag and drag out. Cannon minion in. Shockwave onto two tanks. That tower is down. Super minions on the Nexus turret. And man, TLI are playing this so cleanly, so smoothly. They're just taking their time, making sure their I's are dotted, their T's are dotted, and they're trying to just get everything they can out of that Baron power play. They got a lot out of it. They got another inhibitor. They got another inhibitor turret. Now, certainly not uh, game ending damage, right? They still need the Nexus, but that was quite a lot. They're going to make their way out to the Elder Dragon as well. And, and if they make a full uh, attempt at contesting here, if, if, if the Weaves come out of their base, there's a potential for Jack's two back door. He has TP. I don't, I don't think he's going to backdoor because he's so integral to these team fights, but there is the stun from Hoovers. He's going to get cataclysmed up, and Minion's already super duper low. So he at least trying to put down the damage, but that counter strike up once again gets a three man counter strike. He's all by himself. The three man shock was not enough. Terry is literally 1v5ing. He's so low. He's going to get proc into the GA, but that is what counts. There's the counter strike in, gets the Fiora GA. But, but there's no hope of escape. There it goes. Hurt Nandez gets the stun. Margarine super duper low, but Wild Terry is on a rampage. Sway Lee flashes in, doesn't even get the kill. There it is, the red buff. And now Wild Terry sees the game ending in his Sway Lee coming back from the dead. And now he's caught in a Bermuda triangle of death. He's going to dodge out on everything for now. But what can he do? How far away can he get? He really just wants to kill this Nautilus, but he has no idea where he is. He sees Terry, who doesn't have any mana, but oh man, I don't know if he can do it. Uh, Kaisa shoving in the wave in the bottom side here. They're losing the turrets right now. The Nexus turrets are, are very, very low, which makes the, light, the possibility of Jack's back during even more potent if he wants to do it at another stage here, but Elder Dragon will go over uh, because they are forced to run back and have these minions intellect. 
able to pick up the elder. It is they unfortunate they couldn't. Yeah, it is a little unfortunate they couldn't wait the nine seconds to get Margarine in that elder Drake to. But now that they have it and they have this double inferno, it makes the Baron go down that much quicker. Yes, we see some backs coming in, but they're going to be back in time for the Baron. They have Margarine alive as well. And if that last team fight is indicative, indicative of anything, I'm not feeling good about this Baron if I'm the Weebs. Well, we've already seen one Baron stolen. Maybe a second one, can, a second steal can come in. Um, these these types of plays, there's always that X factor of someone doing something crazy here. And Sway Lee, he's in trouble. Uh, Sway Lee, he's doing something a little crazy in that he is uh, away from his team. Not where you want to be. The, ba the dra uh, Baron getting started up here because the control ward's oh, down, but they've got to go. Look at that damage. Already down to 50% HP. They have to do something. They have to get in there. The Draven ult doesn't even reach it. And there's the Glacial Fissure. Red team secures the Baron. Three-man Shockwave gets one kill. Gets the heal from the Fiora ultimate. And now Zohair's in the back line. But Minion joining his team. Itchy Rat takes him down. Everybody's so low. Terry on a rampage once again. Securing everything. Double kill over to Itchy Rat. Goes for the triple. Shut down Minion and... That is going to be it. There is no possible chance they don't end this game in 40 seconds. And that should be it. That is going to be TLI taking the game, taking it all to the best of three. And I'm just going to take up the turrets here with Minion and down the Nexus go. Uh, I was back and forth and, and I thought maybe with the Fiora how strong she was, they gain a lot off it. But a Terry, a few fights there. Where he got a couple kills, all of a sudden he even up the kill score at five, and then Spear of Shojin comes through. He starts to dominating the one v one against the Fiora, and uh, when the Jax is at, gets that out of control, uh, it's hard to stop it, especially when a lot of your damage is based on auto attacks here. The Fiora and Draven, he, Oriana never really got online. He had hit a, hit a few big shockwaves at the end there, but thirteen kill Jax is hard to stop. It was pretty tanky on the favor of, on the side of TLI. Um, the squishy box or the Kaisa, depending on how you look, of the Nautilus, the drive in, and the Jacks who were on the receiving end of most of them, and every single one of them is tanky. Not a single one of them is going to die to a shockwave. Um, and Jacks, like you said, getting so fed, getting that spear sojin, and then once, literally, once that item happens. Hubris just in three times in a row before he. Which then just propelled the Jacks even further and was getting to a 1v5 point so deep into that. The, yeah, the Jacks was insane. Both, I mean, both top players solo kill each other three times, I think. Um, but in the end, the Jacks gets the, the last laugh and, uh, well, a fantastic couple games there from them. Really good stuff, and and uh, looks like the, they'll take the series cleanly that time. Yeah, 12 are going to take the series 2-0, and that is going to be it for us here at the Risen Dominate pre-made series. This is week 6. 12 are going to take it 2-0 to take the victory on the week, and thank you again for everybody who's tuning in. Once again, I'm the Doctor, joined by I'm Not Coise. And from behind the scenes, we had Daddy Zillion, who was actually showing us all the things that we had to talk about. So give us a thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.